Uh, all right, let's start again. This is Mike Kelly, and I'm demoing uh, Face Creator. This is the male version, and there is also a female version. Uh, this is just my concept of how to do this. I don't. Uh, I'm not going to supply this to anybody, although I will supply the the scripts and and some of the basics. I'd be glad to explain how it works to everybody. My my idea was that uh, I have to create a lot of characters for our show. And it's sometimes a big drag to have to draw a lot of characters each time. Obviously, the main characters, I can spend some time and create them and make them work exactly the way or look exactly the way I want them to. But for secondary characters, a lot of times you spend a lot of time drawing somebody that's only going to be on screen for, you know, maybe 20, 30 seconds or something. Uh, so I decided that I, I was playing around with Futurama's uh, Head in a Jar app, which I highly recommend those of you with smartphones. You ought to... You ought to get, if nothing more than just to play with. It's very, it's fun to play with. And the concept occurred to me that we could do something similar in Anime Studio. So that's what I have here. So basically, as you can see here, I have a face. What I've done, if you play around with that app, you'll see uh, what it allows you to do is you define certain parts and then you choose those parts. So for example, I have ears here and I have, uh, in this particular point, I have nine different ears. So you can choose different ears. You can see the different ears as they appear there. And uh, same for the head hair. I've got uh, tons of basically, um, <laughs> all right, ba basic memory. Uh, so uh, I'm, watching, I'm watching things change on my screen automatically. Um, so you can see there's lots of different, uh, different hairstyles. And one of the things I've done about this app is I've, I've, it, it's somewhat data-driven. If you understand the concept of data-driven apps, uh, that means that uh, part of the data that's inside of it controls uh, how the app behaves. In this particular case, if there's a plus sign after the hairstyle, then it knows that there's an additional hair, what I call behind hair, that matches up to that. So in this particular case, there's there's writer behind hair that matches up. So that's behind the, the different face there. So then that'll automatically match it up, as you'll see shortly. So anyway, so I have different things. And there's different eyewears, there's different glasses and, uh, and things that you can choose. And facial hair, of course, and all different kinds of, of things. And, uh, and mouths, again... Uh, three or four different kinds of mouths. It's hard to see the subtle differences, but there are differences there, the mouths. And um, and then the faces, which are the basic shapes of the outlines of the faces. So, um, and hair extensions. I have things like uh, ponytails and things back there. So, anyway, uh, you could, like in the Futurama app, you could just go through and, and pick things. So you could say, well, I, you know, I like facial hair. I want this guy to have... Uh, to have a little goatee or something. But what I decided was that I would write an app that would randomize these features and create faces for me. And that there's there's a several advantages to this. Number one, it's kind of fun. Uh, you can just kind of hit the button and have it generate uh, different styles for you. But, but more importantly, it picks combinations that you might never pick yourself. And uh, and that to me is even interesting because there's, there's things that you... Uh, as you'll see, that I never would have thought of to do. So I'm going to go through, uh, just press the button over and over again, the, the number of different possibilities, and it also changes the hair color too automatically, the program that does this. The, um, I think there's, I think I figured out there were several million different combinations, so you could, you would probably never hit the same one twice, although you, some of them are obviously very similar. Also, well, let me, let me just show you there. So I'm pressing the button, and as I press the button, obviously, it's just generating these, uh, these random heads as we go through. And um, some of them are good. Some of them are not so good. It just depends on the, the combinations. But the nice thing about it is that you can, you can generate a million of them without... Uh, and if you find one you happen to like, I wanted to show you this. Sometimes when I see ones, they remind me of people. Uh, if you find one that, that you like, but it isn't perfect, because some of the hairstyles, for example, don't quite match. Like, like this one here, this has a ponytail attached to it, and this ponytail uh, detracts from his hairstyle, but that's just because it's a random feature. But you can go in and, and, uh, and take out that, you know, and, and same thing goes if you happen to, uh, let me see if I can get one here that, that, where the skull doesn't. Okay, here's a good example. 
this particular beard doesn't match up to the skull and, and, and this hair doesn't match up to the skull either. Uh, if I liked this head, actually I don't really like this head. Let me find one I actually like and we'll, I'll show you how the editing process works. Um, uh, trouble is they're, they're matching up pretty good, but sometimes they don't match up and I'll show you what you can do if you find one you really like and it doesn't match up. Uh, okay, here's a good one. Let's say I like this guy. I really like this head. I want to save this, but you notice his skull peaks up a little bit above his hair. So first of all, I've got another program, a script that saves that. I was running a script that to run right the random one. This actually creates the face file and we'll call this uh, Joe. And it creates that face file now. Save Joe. And now if I open up Joe, open him up here in the, and he's here somewhere. And there's Joe. Uh, so he's got this problem that is that his head. So, well, it's really easy to go in and um, I can even just go into the face and, uh, you know, just alter that. So it just goes down below there. So now I've got his face. And, and that's about the most modification you have to do. Sometimes there's, like I say, there's some hair here and there that might need to be uh, modified or whatever. But basically, that's about all I have to do. And, and then his head is fully functional. And, and his head is functional to the degree that, uh, for example, he has, um, I have the ability to, uh, his, his um, pivot point is set correctly here. So that if I, uh, if I go here to move the layers, he, he pivots his head correctly on the neck. Uh, also, his eyes and his mouth are all set properly, so uh, you know I can adjust the. Uh, if, if those of you that have seen my my process, you know that I can uh, I can adjust various things automatically through uh, through these through these things. So uh, so anyway uh, so anyway that's that's all there is to it. You know, just generate your automatic heads, and uh, for me this has saved a tremendous amount of time, or will, at least will. I'm I'm looking forward to to using it in our next show about generating a, a ton of heads, and I think. Uh, the nice part about the process is once I figured out the scripting and the programming for it, actually creating the heads and the faces took very little time. It only took uh, uh, a few days to, to generate the different head shapes and the different hair and things. So, uh, it, oh, and, and one thing I wanted to mention too, let me go back to this. Uh, 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 it's going to complain at me because I've changed him, but... Uh, some of the faces, you know, I, I use a family style American dad sort of thing so that the faces have a generic sort of sense. And so one of the things is when you go through these faces, a lot of them, they look very similar. Part of that reason is that they share similar eyes. And of course, they do have the, the same sort of mouth style. Although the mouth will vary. If you look that, there's that mouth that has a little uh, thing that goes up there to the to the nose and the chin. And there's a it's hard to see, but there's a mouth that doesn't, and a mouth that's straight. But they share very general characteristics, which is why when people look at our show, they go, that looks like American Dad. Um, so yes, uh, that's a way of actually working to your advantage because you do want your characters to look like they all belong to the same universe. So if you use a, a generation scheme like this, even though there'll be enough variance that, uh, that people look very different, it'll still uh, give you the ability to uh, um, you know, generate a lot of heads that belong together. And the one thing I didn't show you too, I didn't show you all this, there's a, if uh, I have um, so a few styles here, one of the styles is skin. So if I decide I like this guy, but you know, he should be uh, a different ethnicity, uh, I can easily change his, his ethnic color too. So, uh, so now I can get a whole series of people that are, that are that particular ethnicity. Um, so once again, that's my auto generator. And the worst part about it is that you, you suddenly get into a, a mode where you just want to play too much. And uh, I find that I, uh, I tend to uh, just have a lot of fun making different heads. Okay, so that's it.